This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 via the World Designs Electronics and Octopod, the fastest search engine for electronic parts. In today's episode, I'm going to use the PN532 NFC RFID module with Arduino. Since this is a getting started video on the PN532 RFID module, so I will try my level best to explain as much as possible. I will also try to make this video as simple and easy to understand as possible. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment below. I will try to answer all your questions as soon as possible. Anyway, I will also compare PN532 RFID module with the most popular and well-known RFID module MFRC522. I will also try to explain the difference between PN532 and MFRC522. I will also share with you the technical specifications of PN532 so that you can decide which one is the right RFID module for you. And in the end, I will explain how to interface PN532 RFID module with the Arduino and how to write a very basic program to control an LED using RFID takes. So without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this video can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. First, let's start by comparing the PN532 RFID module with the most well-known MFRC522 RFID module which I have been using for quite a long time. The MFRC522 RFID module is a good choice if you are looking for an inexpensive RFID reader module that supports the MyFair classic 1k and 4k chips you can read takes it up to 5 meter or 16 feet with an active antenna and 10 centimeter or 3.9 inches with a passive one it has a high speed spi interface which makes it easy to use in embedded applications i have used it in so many projects i will add links to all the related videos in the description while on the other hand, the PN532 NFC RFID module V3 is a very powerful and flexible RFID module. It can be used for many different applications such as access control, time attendance systems, animal identification, inventory management and more. It uses less power than the MFRC522 because its parts are designed for low power consumption and it is also more flexible than the MFRC522. It has additional features such as support for a wide range of frequencies, making it easier to read takes from more angles without having to move your antenna around. It is compatible with all ISO 1443A and B standards, as well as the NXP's MyFair Classic 1K and 4K chips. The PN532 has a high-speed SPI interface and is firmware upgradable via an AD command set. It can read takes it up to 8 meters or 27 feet with an active antenna and 10 centimeter or 3.9 inches with a passive one. You can even use the PN532 in Linux or Mac OS X thanks to its open source drivers. The PN532 RFID module also has an I2C interface which makes it easy to use in embedded applications. So if you're looking for a more advanced RFID reader module, the PN532 is a good choice. It can pretty much do it all, such as read and write to takes and cards, communicate with phones and act like an NFC take. If you want to do any sort of embedded NFC work, this is the chip you will want to use. It supports a wide range of input voltages from 2.7 to 3.6 volts and this means it can be used with all 3.3 volt and 5 volt compatible controller boards like Arduino, ESP32, ESP8266, Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi Pico, STM32 and so on. In active mode it uses 50 milliamps at 13.56 MHz and 80 milliamps at 125 kHz while in sleep mode it uses only 1 microamps. For more technical specifications, read my article available on electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. Now let's go ahead and take a look at its spin-out. Ultium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. 
it's easy. Leave a comment taking your teammate and they will instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. Using the browser interface, you are able to comment, markup, cross probe, inspect and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Ultimate Designer as well as through the browser interface. Design, share and manufacture all in the same space with nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from Ultimate Designer without changing how you already design electronics. Ultim 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. Get real-time component insights as you design with Octopart built into Ultium 365. Octopart is the fastest search engine for electronic parts and gives you the most up-to-date part data like specs, data sheets, gate models, and how much the part costs at different amounts, etc. right in the design environment. So you can focus on your designs. Links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopart are given in the description. You can see all the headers are clearly labeled. The PN532 NFC RFID module V3 can be interfaced with the Arduino and other controller boards using HSU, High Speed UART, i c and SPI. This board has an onboard level shifter standard 5-volt TTL for I2C and UART and 3.3-volt TTL SPI. Anyway, the I2C and HSU high-speed UART shares the same pins. The HSU mode is configured as the default mode, but if you want to change the interface then you can use these toggle switches. Don't worry, I will explain how to use all the three modes. First, I will start with its default mode HSU. So before I'm going to interface it with the Arduino, first I'm going to solder the male headers. As you can see, I'm done with the soldering and now it's ready to be interfaced with Arduino. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagram. The VCC and ground pins of the PN532 RFID module are connected with the Arduino 5 volt and ground pins, while the TX and RX pins are connected with the Arduino D2 and D3 pins. Two LEDs are connected with the Arduino pins 5 and 6. These are the minimal connections that you will need to get started. If you want to externally power up your Arduino board, then you can use this 5 volt regulated power supply based on the LM7805 voltage regulator. Otherwise, you can use your laptop to power up the Arduino. As usual, I'm using my Arduino Nano development board. I have connected the LEDs and PN532 RFID module as per the circuit diagram. I'm sure you guys might have guessed that this setup is for the HSU high speed UART. It doesn't matter if you start with HSU, I2C or SPI first, you need to download all the required libraries. You can download this WinRAR file from our website electronicclinic.com. You can see inside this folder we have all the required libraries so simply copy these folders and paste it into the Arduino libraries folder. As you can see I already have these folders so I'm going to click on skip these files. 
this code is written for the HSU mode and you can see I'm using pins 3 and 2 and the LEDs are connected with the Arduino pins 5 and 6. You can also use this code to find the RFID takes IDs. For this simply open the serial monitor and start scanning your RFID takes. Using these IDs in the programming, you can control certain things. In my case, I'm going to control two LEDs. Anyway, I have already uploaded this program and let's watch the PN532 RFID Mario HSU mode in action. Now let's go ahead and start with the I2C mode. I have already explained that HSU and I2C shares the same pins. This time you can see the SDA and SCL pins of the PN532 RFID module are connected with the Arduino A4 and A5 pins while everything remains exactly the same. Now you can see the SDA and SCL pins are connected with the Arduino A4 and A5 pins. Since this time I'm using the I2C mode so I'm also going to turn on the channel 1. This time I included the I2C library. I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the PN532 RFID module I2C mode in action. Now let's go ahead and start with the SPI mode. If you want to use the SPI mode of the PN532 RFID module, then you will need to connect SCK with the Arduino pin 13, MISO with pin 12, MOSI with pin 11, SS with pin 10, RSTO with pin 9 of the Arduino, while everything else remains exactly the same. I connected the PN532 RFID module SPI pins with the Arduino as per the circuit diagram. Now to activate the SPI mode on the PN532 RFID module you will need to turn off the channel 1 and turn on the channel 2. This time you can see I have added the SPI library. Everything else remains exactly the same. I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the PN532 RFID module SPI mode in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.